us lift our hands and love the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for raising us and justifying us. Sin lost, grace won. We're so thankful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, lift your voice and just love the Lord all over the building today. Lord, we love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Remain standing around the building. The Bible says, sing to the Lord a new song. And that song that they just sang, they wrote, Brother Dylan, Sister Lakin, and Brother Fish wrote that song this week. I think we ought to thank God for that. Wasn't that a beautiful song? We just sang to the Lord. So thankful for their ministry. Uh, before the evangelist comes, I want to give an update. Thank you. So many of you have been praying for my brother. And I, I made an announcement in the 10 a.m., but I will also tell this wonderful group of people here today. I had to slip out early and right before the, right almost during the altar call, I got a phone call from my sister in law that my brother had passed out. Before I could leave the building, they had confirmed because they couldn't get him to respond. When they showed up, the ambulance showed up, they couldn't find a pulse on him and um, found out that he was having a massive heart attack. And they did an emergency procedure and put three stents in the artery behind his heart. When he came out of the procedure, he certainly felt better but was very weak. And they told him his heart had been damaged, that it was uh, functioning at 35% in that area of his heart should be 65% in that area of the heart for a normal person. And uh, they have told him, they said, you have two arteries that need to be bypassed. So they are looking at doing a bypass here in a few weeks. And But I was there when the medical staff, the doctor one time, a nurse another time said, your heart's at 35%. They said, these things typically don't recover. I heard them say, they said, even with medicine, maybe you'll get it up around 5%. We'll hope for more, but usually around 5%. I'm so glad to tell you that they did a test of my brother this week and his heart is at 60%. That is a miracle. And we give God glory for it. We give God glory for it. Hallelujah. How many know there's power in prayer? Amen. And thank you for praying. We continue to pray. They are still planning on doing that bypass on the other two arteries, but God can open that up. We trust what's going to happen. We know he's in the hand of the Lord. And aren't we thankful? I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like the body of Christ. Having people to encourage and pray and say, we've been praying. I mean, there's power in prayer. Hey, Amen. I look back and see Sister Connie Tate here. We love you and have missed you. We're so glad for the goodness of the Lord. Hey, Amen. She hasn't felt this good in a long time. We're thankful. We're so thankful. Would you lift your hands and pray again for my brother before we transition service? God, I thank you for Pastor David Bounds, a man of great faith. The Lord was very broken one week ago. But we know that you do all things well. We place him in your hands. We're believing for total healing in his body so he can do what you've called him to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say amen. In the last, in the last little over three weeks or so, maybe 25 plus days, maybe around 30 days. But uh, we've seen 40 some people baptized in the name of Jesus, I'm thankful for it. So many people are coming to God, hungry for God. 100 and some people are wanting Bible studies to be taught. I think it's powerful. The world wants something to change in their life and we know who can change it. His name is Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Oh, somebody shout Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. We want our evangelist to come. We know he's got a word. This is his last Sunday of our series of meetings we have done here for the last five weeks. He has been a blessing to this congregation. He's been a blessing to this city. He really has. Brother Fish, we love you and your family so very, very much. We want you to come and preach the word of the Lord. I believe God's hand is upon this, this man. Would you put, stretch your hands forth toward him and pray that God would strengthen him? Lord, we pray strengthen him. We know that your word is anointed. We pray your anointing upon him to do what you've called him to do, not only this morning, but even tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Would you give Brother Fish a big welcome as he comes to preach the word of the Lord? Come on, let's bless the Lord in this house. Oh, come on, if he's raised you to life, you ought to lift up your hands and thank him. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he shouldn't have kept me when he found me, but he kept me when he found me. Come on, somebody love him in this place. Hallelujah. I will go today to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. So honored uh, to be here with you. 43 baptized in 26 days, I think. What an unbelievable move of the Holy Ghost. And uh, man, I'd love to see us hit 50 today. Hallelujah. I, uh, I'm going to go to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Special honor to the Bounds family. We love them so much. What an impact they have made on us. And uh, not, not, just, not just pastor and first lady, but this entire family. So there, there's, something, there's such a special anointing on every member of their family. And uh, we love them so greatly. They have been so kind to us, so kind to me, my wife, my children. We love them, and uh, we look forward to, to the future. Uh, I'm, I want to I wanna encourage uh, this church to continue these times of outreach. Uh, I, ble- I believe we made 18 solid contacts yesterday. In the city, I believe somewhere around 10 Bible studies were set up um, on, on one Saturday. And, uh, you know, this, this is what the kingdom is all about. It's not about getting up here and saying, well, we set up 10 Bible studies. But it's about 10 souls who have the opportunity to see the truth and be changed forever. And... Uh, I've enjoyed my time. I've got to know so many here. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what the Lord is going to do today. Uh, today I will preach to you a message I have never preached. As a matter of fact, uh, there's something that hit me this week. And I really did not completely finish putting it together. I don't, even, I don't think it's truly finished put together, being put together. But uh, I, I typed this up this morning. And I really feel like it's a word for someone in this room. Hear me, I, I do not claim to be the greatest preacher or the greatest evangelist that there, there is or ever was. But I, I do recognize when God is speaking and when God is pulling for someone. And that will happen today. I feel God so strong. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter number 5, And there came, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broke in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he might not send them away out of the country. And there was, and there, was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about... 
They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. My subject for you this morning will be this. Invisible chains. Invisible chains. Let's lift up our hands and begin to talk to the Lord. Jesus, I feel you in this place. I know you are ready to reach for a soul in this room. There is somebody that is here today, God, that has walked in in bondage. I pray, God, that there would be a breaking, that there would be a drawing. Oh, God, a drawing to this altar, God, that would alter someone's destiny for the rest of their life. I wish somebody would pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I cannot help but feel that there is a soul in the balance this morning somebody begin to pray and talk to the Lord reach for somebody in this place come on let's clap our hands to the Lord in this house oh hallelujah somebody love him if you believe he's about to set somebody free somebody love him hallelujah Please be seated across the room here today. Invisible chains. Somebody say chains. Today, I'm going to preach to you a little bit about chains. When you look through the Word of God, chains are mentioned many times. There is no doubt that when Joseph, that dreamer, was betrayed by his brothers... And he was sold into slavery and taken to Egypt. There is no doubt that whenever the money, that 30 pieces of silver was exchanged, there is no doubt that Joseph, from that day forward being a prisoner, was placed in chains. Somebody say chains. In the story of Samson, we see a man of great supernatural strength we see him fall we see him fall laying his head in the lap of a harlot by the name of Delilah his eyeballs are are plucked out and he is placed in fetters and chains somebody say chains when you are in chains you have no freedom When you are in chains, you have no liberty. When you are in chains, you cannot do all of the things that you want to do. When you are in in chains, your dreams are on hold. When you are in chains, your purpose is on hold. When you are in chains, oh, the plan that God has for you is seemingly on hold. I look in the scripture and the Bible says in Jeremiah 52 and 10 and the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes he slew also the princes of Judah in Riblah verse 11 says then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon to be put to put him in prison to the day of his death uh, hear me when someone is put in chains uh, it is to bring them down to bind them uh, to take uh, all of their purpose their liberty and their freedom uh, here we see someone put in chains uh, and he is and he is brought to the prison uh, to the day of of his death. In Psalm 68 and 6, the Bible tells us God set it the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. I want to tell you it is the will of God that somebody in this room be set free. 
You have walked in here today and you are bound. You feel bound, physically bound, mentally bound, spiritually bound. I want to tell you there's somebody in your family that's been praying for you. There's somebody that you're connected to that's been praying for you. My wife, she, uh, I'll never forget her telling me this. My wife, she said that, got to understand, she was a manager. She was a manager at a funeral home, and it was always... Uh, Brother Bounds, it was always her job that when when someone passed away that they would send her the pictures and she would put together the slideshow that was put up on the screen at the funeral. And my wife, uh, being the the holy apostolic woman that she is, uh, she had she just could always identify the apostolic in the family. She said it. It was. She said, it's amazing to me. She said, every slideshow I ever did and put together, somewhere in that family, maybe it was someone in the background. Maybe it was a distant cousin. Maybe it was an old, maybe it was a grandmother. Oh, but there was an apostolic somewhere in that family. Hey, I've got to preach preach to you here today. God has put us, God, God has placed us very strategically on every job that we work in every family that we're in so that we can be a light and we can be an Abraham of that family. We can be an intercessor and we can cry out, why? Because somebody is in chains. I wish there would be an Abraham that would lift their voice on a Sunday morning and say, God, I know Lot is in chains. I know Lot is in trouble. I've got to wrestle with with God a little bit in a time of intercession and pray that he be set free. Somebody say chains. It's the will of God that somebody is set free in this place here today. We see in Acts chapter number 12. In verse number 6, the Bible says, When Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers and bound with two chains. Herod Herod has Simon Peter in the jail cell. He is, he is surrounded by guards. And the Bible says he is bound with two chains. Chains are heavy. There's something about chains. They, there's a look about chains. There's a weight about chains. Chains have a sound. Anybody ever heard the sound of chains? The, 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 when, the, when they drag the ground, they have a certain sound. When they beat up against each other, they have a certain sound. Sound and here Peter was bound, a preacher bound with two chains. Let me preach to you today that the enemy is no respecter of persons and he will bind up whoever he can bind up. He does not care if you, he does not care if you're in the slums or if you are the spokesman of Pentecost. If he has an opportunity, he will bind you in his chains Paul and Silas were bound in chains in Acts 16 in Acts 21 the chief captain came near and took Paul and commanded him to be bound with two chains somebody say chains it's hard to miss a chain Chains have a look, they have a sound, they have a weight. And I've come to preach there are chains here this morning. I was told a story by my father about his closest friend. His name was Jimmy. And Jimmy was one of the best mechanics in the country there in southeast Texas. And his his grandfather was an assembly of God preacher who got the revelation of the mighty God in Christ and this would lead him 
it would lead his grandfather to step down from a pastoral position and begin attending Wiley May Pentecostal Church, north of Silsby, uh, north of Silsby, Texas, where I'm from. God had moved in his life so greatly. It was a, such a powerful conversion. He was baptized in the name of Jesus. And I, I, I'll never forget Jimmy. Jimmy was a good man. He had. I had several conversations with him myself through the years, being my dad's closest friend. But Jimmy had a drug addiction. You know, I'll be honest with you, when I was, many times when I was with him, he seemed like the cleanest of clean. He talked right. He had it all together on the outside, it seemed. But hear me, I... I I'll never forget the story uh, of where his addiction brought him. Uh, as my father began to tell, began to tell me that his drug addiction would drive him about as low as I have ever heard or seen anyone being driven. He would find himself uh, in Beaumont, Texas, uh, living as a prisoner on the property of a drug dealer. His room was a single cab truck. He was a prisoner to this drug dealer. He lived in the cab of that single cab truck. I, I do not know the exact process that led him to this predicament. But, uh, but it was known to him that because of his debts... Of, his, uh, of drug money that this drug dealer owned him. Jimmy was always a very strong man, even in his broken state. But it was clear that if he was to try to leave, uh, this was one of the most powerful drug dealers uh, in all of the area. It was made clear to him uh, that if he was, he was to try and leave, that he would die. Uh, they would kill him. There were people all around the city that knew that he was the prisoner there. Uh, this is in the backyard of where I live. We have no idea that th the things that go around go on around us. Uh, so hear me every day, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy would uh, that 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 drug dealer would come and take Jimmy, and they would fight him like a dog. He was all. He was always a very strong man. He was always a fighter. Uh, my, my dad would always tell me funny stories of how they always find that found themselves in some crazy predicament and they fought their way out. But because he was such a good fighter, this drug, this drug dealer, they would take him and they would gamble on him. They would fight him like a dog. He would fight for his life every single day. He would fight from, from sun up to sundown. He would fight every day it was a fight against another man and then another man and then another man every day it was a life or death fight all day the only time he was let out of fighting or staying in that or let out of that single cab truck was was when he was sent out to steal or he was sent out by this drug dealer to do crimes in the community and hear me today they used him they used him till there was nothing left. One day while he was stealing a vehicle, he made one mistake. Somehow, it was, it was Grand Theft Auto. And he, he looked up and he realized that the mirror, the, the rear view mirror was turned wrong. And he reached up without a glove and adjusted that mirror. And when he did, the police would later identify him by one thumbprint that was on the mirror. And he was placed in the penitentiary. He would, he would, he would tell this story later to my daddy. And he looked at my daddy and he said, Winnie, hear me, Winnie. He said, that was the day that I was set free. What am I saying today? I'm saying today that there are chains that are worse than prison. 
That was the day that I was given my freedom back. Can you imagine? Can you imagine prison being your paradise compared to what you were living in? That's the exact place that he was at. Oh, I've come to preach to you here today. Oh, that, that there are chains that we don't see. Oh, I'm preaching it. It'd be one thing if somebody walked in and you were shackled and you were dragging in some weighted ball behind you. It would be one thing if you came in and you really, you couldn't lift up your hands because you were chained up. But I'm preaching here today that there are chains in this room that nobody sees and nobody else hears. I'm preaching here today there are chains that bind us. Chains that bind the human. Oh, that binds binds a person that nobody else sees and nobody else hears. It's in Mark 5 that we see a demoniac of Gadara and the scripture makes it very plain. This man, oh, the Bible says he had his dwellings among the tombs and no man can bind him. No, not with chains. But because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him this verse makes it very clear there was never a chain that could keep him this verse makes it very clear there was never a fetter that could bind him I can see I can see in my mind Mind's eye as they take this radical, uncontrollable man and they put him in the jail cell. Somehow, oh, what is in him is raging so greatly. This, this supernatural, he is driven by a supernatural power. Oh, he is driven by a demonic force and he breaks every chain that is put on him. The cell cannot hold him. The chains cannot hold him. The word is out. Oh, every, every body, every correctional facility of the day says, you can't hold him. You can't hold, you can't handle him. You cannot bind him. Hear me right now. The Bible says that this man had no chains. But would you tell me today that he was not bound? physically there was no chain that could hold him physically there was no chain strong enough to resist the brute strength that he had to break them off every time but verse hey listen this was not freedom this was just because he did not have chains on him physically this was not freedom because we see in verse 5 it says and always somebody's say always that means all the time night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones let me tell you he knew how to break the chains but he still had chains on him that nobody else saw his mind was chained up his emotions were chained up even his own control of speaking and moving had been chained. I'm preaching here today that just because you don't have chains hanging off you physically don't mean that you don't have invisible chains here today. I've come for somebody in this room. You walk in here and you got your Sunday best on, but nobody knows the chains that are on your life. Oh, you would love to say, I came to church Sunday, so that made me free. Hey, let me tell you, he was a long way from God. And the Bible said that when he saw Jesus afar off, he began to worship him. Let me tell you, there's got to be something in you that says, Lord, 
I don't care how far away you seem this morning. I don't care how distant it feels today. There's got to be a cry on the inside of me. I've got to be set free of invisible chains. I've got to be set free. Oh, there's a lot of things that I could handle myself, but there's voices that nobody else hears that I hear. And there's weights that nobody else feels that I feel. And there's chains that that are locking me up that nobody even truly knows are there. Nobody could put their finger on exactly what was wrong with the demoniac of Gadara. And the reason that was is because it was invisible chains. I think we need to lift our hands and begin to pray. God's reaching for somebody in this house. I preached 20 minutes and God is already reaching in this house right now. There's somebody that's got to say, God, I feel a million miles away. You feel a million miles away, but there's got to be something in me that'll cry out to you. There's got to be something in me that'll reach for you. I'm preaching to a prisoner. Somebody say prisoners. They're Sunday prisoners. Uh, I watched. I watched yesterday as we were at the prayer booth. I watched as people walk from every direction. I walked. There, there was a man that walked up to me. Had a big old a skull of Satan around his neck skull of Satan on every finger I'm going to talk with him trying to pray with him I watched as people walk from every direction I watched as people still having drugs in their body trembled under the addiction that they had hey let me tell you I didn't see physical chains on them but in the spirit it was as if you could hear those chains dragging when they walked away I'm preaching right now you're in this room today sir you're in this room today and maybe nobody else even knows the prison that you've been in lately oh it's been it's it's been, it's been Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 work. But here you are today, and the chains are still there. I've come to preach here today that there are such things as invisible chains, and God has come to deal with invisible chains here today. God has come to deal with your failure. God has come to deal with your hurt. God has come to deal with your pain. God has come to deal with everything that's binding you up here today the Bible says we look here in the scripture and the Bible says that after he after he worships him we see that the devils are cast out and they are thrown and they are put into the pigs and the Bible says that something happens the Bible says that the those that fed the swine those that were used to feeding the swine they come to Jesus in verse 15 and they see that that man Man who was so bound with invisible chains they see that he is sitting he is clothed and he is in his right mind hey let me tell you God wants to touch you physically spiritually and mentally this was a man that was delivered he was completely delivered in his mind in one moment 6,000 voices went silent in one moment, 6,000 voices got quiet because the voice of the Holy One had spoken. I come to tell you it don't matter how loud, it don't matter how loud it's been, God will shut up the voices in your life and God will break the chains on you. Oh, somebody lift up your hands and begin to pray. I cannot help but feel that the chain breaker is in the house here this morning. And the Bible says, I've got to preach on this. He was sitting, he was clothed, and he was in his right mind. And they were afraid. Somebody say afraid. 
I want to preach to somebody that's walked up in here and you said, man, these jokers are crazy on Sunday. I don't understand this. Hey, let me tell you, they did not realize that they were standing right, or that their answer was standing right in front of them. They were scared to death of the most powerful thing in the world. They were scared to death of delivering power. They were scared to death of what was setting free in that country. They were scared to death of the things that just put of the th the single thing that just put 6,000 devils on the run. I got to preach to somebody right now. Just because you don't understand it. Just because you, you ain't never felt anything like this. Just because you've never seen anything like this don't mean you don't need to give it a try. You're here today, and you're looking, and we got people that's been baptized. Oh, I saw the brother. My, where's he at? God gave him a job. God gave him a job. He's got a nice haircut. He, come on, man. Look at what God. Come up here. Run up here right now. Run up here to me. Run up here to me. Come on. The world don't understand what God's doing for you. But I want to tell you, I believe it's just the beginning for what God's going to do with people in this city. I wish somebody would shout for God giving him a job. I wish somebody would dance for God giving him a job. What is it? Oh, God is breaking invisible chains. Poverty is not your future. Come on, homelessness is not your future. I'm preaching to somebody right now. They don't understand it. They didn't understand it. As a matter of fact, the Bible said they feared it. But I've come to preach to you. Don't, be, don't fear what will fix you. Don't fear what will fix you. Don't fear what's going to pull you out of your situation. Oh, preacher, but it feel, I ain't never felt like I was raised Baptist or I was raised Catholic and I'm used to going to, I'm going, I'm used to going to mass. Well, we have mass here too, but it's called mass deliverance. It's called mass healing. I don't know what you need, but I've come to tell you, give this a try. I'm talking about the God that breaks invisible chains. Somebody ought to stand on your feet and lift up your heads and say, I'm going to give him a shot. I'm going to give him a shot. Let's lift our hands and pray in this place right now. Yoshataye. Yandaba Yoshataraba Yasai. Come on, stand, lift your hands and pray. God's doing something right now. He can heal your mind. He can heal your body. Come on. He can correct that crooked family tree. Come on. He can set your feet on a rock. I'm preaching about the God that breaks what nobody sees. Give me a piano player this morning. Lift your hands to the Lord. God's doing something. Let's stand right now. I'm talking about things in your life that nobody sees. God wants it today. Voices that nobody else hears, God wants to deal with them today. Hurts that nobody else feels, God wants to deal with it today. I read a scripture this morning. It got all over me. I don't know if you can put this on the on the screen Psalms 79 oh God I feel God here today lift your hands and pray he's reaching he's reaching he's reaching Psalm 79 and 11 come on let's, let's lift our hands and pray for a second Something's happening in this room. Let the scream. <laughs> no. Let that radical voice of the prisoner know. No. 
Let the sighing. You might know what a sighing is. God, I don't know how I could do this. Looking at your life, you got no words for it. You look at your life, you look at the mess you're in, and all you can say is, but today, Scripture says that there's a God that's looking for a hopeless sigh in this room here today. Matter of fact, he's already seen it. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve those that are appointed to die. Preserve. I'm simple. I thought about preservatives in our food. <laughs> Things that make peanut butter last. I'm going to tell you there's plenty there's plenty of things that would try to make you expire but there's a God that's reaching into this room and he's saying I can put something in you that will make you last I can put something in you that will build you up again I can put something in you you don't have to hang your head anymore. But you can stand up and have purpose and have power. Oh, I've come to tell you what God's looking for. He's looking for the one that's had the hopeless sigh. Bound by invisible chains. Where are you today, my friend? God is reaching for you. Come on, let's lift our hands. Friend of mine. You are here. Friend of mine, you are here today. And God, he's heard the hopeless sigh. And those are the ones he's come to restore. He's heard the hopeless sigh. There's no hope for my life. There's no hope for my family. There's no hope for my marriage. There's no hope. I've made too much of a mess. I'm too addicted. I'm too strung out. There's no way out. Oh, you don't see. Oh, it's a, it's a sigh. But I've come to tell you, he has heard the sigh. The sigh of the prisoner has come before him this day. And as our hands are lifted, I'm asking if you're here today and you say, Preacher, there's some invisible chains that I need broken in my life. I challenge you to step out and walk towards freedom today. Come on, sis, walk down to this altar. Come on, sir, walk down to this altar. God is doing something in this house. Can we lift up our hands and begin to pray? Come on, can we lift up our hands and begin to pray? Hallelujah. Come on, sis, let's pray. God wants to do something today. Oh, God, come on, is there anybody else? Come on, just lift up them hands. God, I'm ready. I'm ready for a touch. I'm ready for a move in my life. God, you're the God that breaks invisible chains. Come on, let's begin to pray. Come on, let's begin to sing. Come on, let's begin to love the Lord in this house. Come on, begin to love the Lord in this house. Listen to me for a moment. Somebody's got to deal with the things that have been a hold, that have got a hold of you. When them devils went into the pigs, the pigs went to the water. I tell you, there's only one way to deal with your devils. You got to go to the water. If you're here and you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, today is your day, friend. 
if you're here today, you say, you know what, preacher, I was baptized a long time ago. I don't remember what was said. I, you've got to be baptized today. It's the name that makes the difference. The Bible says, when a devil comes out of a man that he'll walk through dry places, the adversary hates the water. The devil can't stand the water. But somebody's got to stand up and make up your mind. There's some things that are dying in my life today. I'm getting in the water and I'm about to be washed clean. I'm getting in the water and I'm about to start over. I'm getting in the water and I will be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The scripture says, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, some of you, a few of you, those that just gather on Sunday. No, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the blotting out, the doing away with, the forgiveness of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you're here today, you've never been baptized in Jesus' name. This is your moment, man. You're here, you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. This is your moment, sir. If you're here and you have one doubt in your mind, I don't know what was said over me. This is your moment. Is there anybody here that said, Preacher, I've got to have my sins washed away. Are you here? Anybody? Front, back, left to right. Is there any? Back, let's do this. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God is pulling for somebody. This is a, you know what this is? This is an opportunity. Somebody say opportunities. Jesus said, except a man be born of water. Somebody say water. That's baptism. Except a man be born of water and a spirit, he cannot see the kingdom. Then he said, except a man be born of water and a spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. I've come to tell you, he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptism is a matter of your salvation because baptism applies the blood of Jesus to your life. If you're here today, every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here today, you say, Preacher, I'm a little embarrassed. I don't want to just run up there. If the, but, but I'm here today and I know God is calling me to make a step, to take a step. I've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Let me see your hand. Is there anybody? Okay, anybody? Anybody? God is moving so greatly in this place. Look at me right now. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, I have these towels up here. I want you to look at the person next to you, everybody. Look at the person next to you. Put your arm around them. Wrap them up right now. Ask them, have you been baptized in Jesus' name? Come on, if you're standing next to somebody you know has been baptized in Jesus' name, go find somebody else. Go find somebody. Ask them. This is the day of intervention. This is a day of intervention. Come on, maybe you were baptized in the titles. We got to make sure it was in Jesus' name. We got to make sure it was in Jesus' name. I'm thankful for chains that were broken, but if there's anybody that wants to be baptized today, we'll do it today. Let's lift our hands and begin to love the Lord right now. Let's begin to love Him. God has moved so beautifully in this place. God has moved so beautifully in this place. God has moved so beautifully in this place. Come on, ma'am. Let God move on you right now. Come on, lay hands on somebody. God's still moving. I want y'all to play that music a little longer. God is still moving in this house. Chains are being broken. Come on, close your eyes. Let that Holy Ghost move on you. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving.